Hey everyone, today I wanted to have a quick video that talks about voltage conversion for Roland synthesizers. In my last video I restored my JV80's button functionality. A lot of the buttons had, re had uh, failed on it. And while I had it open, I took a quick look at the power supply and realized how simple line voltage conversion on these synthesizers is. The reason I bring this up is because a lot of these synthesizers on eBay right now are from different countries, specifically Japan. And those synths are designed to run on Japanese standards of 100 volts, 50 hertz mains power source. Compared to here in the US, we have 120 volts versus over in Europe, you typically it's 230, 240 volt. With a lot of modern electronics, they use switching power supplies, which accept a very, very wide range of input voltages. They'll run basically anywhere from, you know, as low as 60, 70, 80 volts AC, all the way up until 240, 250, sometimes as high as 300 volts AC. You see this in servers a lot, specifically because data centers run on a lot of different voltages. On three-phase power, 208 volts is very common. A lot of things still run on 120, 240 volts is also a possibility. So they make the servers run on a very wide range of input power. Typically, the higher the voltage a server runs on, the more efficient it runs and the less heat it produces. The higher the voltage, the less current it uses. With Roland synthesizers, at least most I've looked at, they use straight linear supplies, which are, which are very simple. So with the Roland synthesizers being available from Japan and requiring 100 volt power, you need to either use a external step-down transformer to bring the voltage down to 100 volts, or modify it to run on 120 volts here in the US for our case. Or in Europe, 240 volts it is, it is just as easy as a modification. Now realistically, this synth is designed to work on 120 volts will probably work just fine at 100 and it's true is the opposite. If it runs on 100 volts, it'll probably work fine at 120 volts. There isn't that big of a difference in there between those voltage ranges that could probably cause any problems, but we'll check that later in this video. In this video, I'm going to quickly show you the power supply in this Roland synthesizer, explain why it's necessary to modify it, and what damage can be done to it if you do run it on the incorrect voltage, and show how easy it is to modify it to run on the correct input voltage for your country. So this schematic is a very simplistic diagram of what the power supply inside this Roland synthesizer is. In this case, it is my JV80, but most Roland synthesizers I've looked at use this exact same supply. On the input side, we have a simple transformer that's got actually multiple taps on it, which I'll talk about here in a moment. Primary side goes to your AC source. Secondary side comes off of the actual transformer and feeds into a bridge rectifier. With this, it converts AC to DC. Then you've got a basic filtering capacitor, remove some of the ripple, and then it goes into your voltage regulators. In this case, I've just drawn a single 7805 regulator for 5 volt plus 5 volt power. The output of that, again, you have some decoupling capacitors, then that goes to your uh, power, your, your synthesizer. Now, it, it's slightly more complex than this, but honestly, not that much more complex. On the output side, you've got more regulators for different voltages, typically positive and negative voltages for the analog digital converters. You've got additional secondary taps here that provide different AC outputs for the various voltages for you know, multiple rectifiers that drive these different actual supplies. A lot of times on these synths too, they'll have multiple supplies that separate the analog circuitry from the digital circuitry, just to limit digital noise getting into the analog pathways of the, of the synthesizer. So the important part about this diagram is this input here. You notice that the transformer has got multiple taps for, in this case, four different voltages. 100 volts, 120 volts, 230 volts, 240 volts. Now, transformers work on basically a ratio. So what's going on here is that they've already pre-calculated the ratio to the number of turns on the primary side and have taps available for you to tap off at different points to provide a consistent output voltage on the secondary side of the transformer. This is key because a couple components on this side are very sensitive to the voltages coming off of here. Typically these capacitors are only rated for a certain voltage, so if you have too many volts coming off of the secondary here, it could damage and, and destroy your capacitor. The voltage regulator itself is designed for a certain range of voltages. Typically a 7805 will you know, work from a little over 5 volts up to 25 or 30 volts. Anything beyond that you could actually damage the unit as listed in its absolute maximum specifications in the data sheet. Bridge rectifier, depending on the rectifier they're using, can probably handle the higher voltage coming off of there, but there is still ratings to this that need to be taken into consideration. Too low of a voltage can actually have opposite effects, specifically with the regulators, not being able to drive the actual output necessary for the circuitry. So in cases of this synthesizer, if you had a 240 volt uh, origin country unit that required 240 volts, and you were only running it here in the US at 120 volts, 
your secondary voltage coming off would only be half the voltage necessary to run the circuitry, which may not be enough to even drive the 7805. If it's not seeing a little over 5 or higher volts on the input there, it's not going to provide the 5 volts on the output. It's not going to boost that voltage. Here's a look at the actual linear supply in my JV80 synthesizer. So, transformer here. This is the primary side. This is the secondary side. On the secondary, you can see the multiple taps coming off of here that actually run to the power supply volt uh, board, which then I've got two bridge rectifiers, one here and one here. One of these is for the uh, plus 12 and minus 12 voltages for the analog side. And then the secondary rectifier is for the 5 volt side, which runs right here, right here to the 7805. Again, we have filtering capacitors for each regulator, and then decoupling capacitors, various ceramic and small electrolytics for the, for the actual output side as well. So on the primary side, this is what we're interested here. So you can see the four taps I talked about, 240 volt, 230 volt, 120 volt, 100 volt. Because this unit was designed for the U.S. market, and it is labeled so on the back, it is labeled 120 volts, and you can see that the hot indicated by the black wire off the AC mains is connected to the 120 volt tap on this transformer. Neutral will always go to, in this case, the zero volt label tap on this transformer indicated by the white wire. So for this synth, if it had come from Japan, you would have found that this black primary or this black hot wire here would be on this 100 volt tap. And if you needed to convert it to the U.S. market, you would simply unsolder it from this tap and place it on the 120 volt tap here. Same thing if this was going to Europe and you wanted to have this run on 240 volts, you would place it over on this 240 volt tap here. And any other change of countries would be the exact same thing. You would basically move this hot wire to the correct tap on the primary side of this transformer. So that the secondary voltages coming off of here are within the proper range of the actual linear power supply. To explain why the correct input voltage is critical on these linear supplies, I've got a little test set up here where I can demonstrate it. I've got an isolation transformer that's basically a variac feeding my JV80 from my main line. So I've got 120 volts here feeding into this, and I can adjust the output voltage of this from 0 all the way up to 150 volts. On the actual JV80, I've got the transformer tapped in a couple places. I have the input trapped on this meter here on the right here, so you can see I'm at 120 volts. The second meter is showing me the secondary in the transformer that's feeding the 5 volt regulator. You can see right now it's right about 7.5 volts. The third meter shows the output of the 7805, which is right about 5 volts right now. So as I talked about before, the 100 to 120 volts isn't that big of a difference in terms of the output voltage going to this power supply. Chances are it will still work at 100 volts, and in this case it actually does. To show this, I will turn this down. So right now I'm at 120 volts. I'll start decreasing it down. You can see the primary side dropping down to 110 now. Secondary is a little below 7 volts, but I've still got 5 volts in my output. Going all the way down to right about 100 volts, my input side is, is 100 right now. Uh, secondary is 6.2 volts AC, and then 5 volts is still stable coming out of that actual regulator. If I continue the voltage down a little bit further, you can see that as we start approaching the minimum required voltage on that 7805, 7805 will start to drop, right around 86, 87 volts AC. So at this point is when the synthesizer may start having issues because the digital logic in here, in here that's expecting to run at 5 volts DC is no longer getting 5 volts. So with this though, I'm all the way down to 81 volts, which is very unlikely. You'd have to have a, a serious brownout or something going on to get that voltage. The same is true for the 15 volt side. It's usually about a little over 20 volts AC coming off that transformer feeding those 15 volt regulators. So it will still, this synth will still run at 100 volts, even though it's designed for 120 volts in this case. Now the other way around may be a different story, because if I have a 100 volt synthesizer and I'm feeding 120 volts into it, the secondaries are going to have higher voltages coming out of there, which may actually exceed some of those specifications I talked about before in terms of the maximum voltages for the capacitors or the absolute maximum ratings of some of those regulators. You'd have to check the capacitor values, uh, the specs in the capacitors is checked to verify that, along with the regulator's absolute maximum specifications too. When you're running them with a, when you're running regulators with a lot more voltage, they usually run a little bit hotter too because they've got to dissipate that additional energy as heat. So it's it's not really good for them at terms, depending on actually the current draw of the device that's under load. Now, in terms of if this was a 240 volt device and I was running it here at the US on 120 volts, it most likely wouldn't power. The secondary wouldn't have enough voltage coming out of it to actually run the drive the regulators properly. And in the other case, 
if this was a 120 volt and I was going to run it in a 240 volt country, it would almost surely damage it because the voltage is coming off of that secondary and that transformer and be double what it was designed to operate at. So those two cases specifically, if you're going from 120 to 240 or 240 to 120, you're absolutely going to have to change the taps in that transformer. If you're going from 100 to 120 or 120 to 100, it might still work depending on the exact make and model of the synth, but I would still recommend moving the tap in the transformer anyway for the proper country voltage just to be sure. One additional thing to keep in mind as well, if you're going to do a voltage conversion like this, it doesn't apply specifically to this JV80 because it doesn't have a fuse, but a lot of gear does have fuses. And if your gear is fused and you're switching the voltage from, say, 120 to 240 volt or the other way around, your fuse requirements will most likely change because the current draw at the difference of, at the current draw at 240 volt is going to be different than the current draw at 120 volt. So if at 240 volt you had a 1 amp fuse in your device, at 120 volt it might be a 2 amp fuse, and the other way around too. If you have a device that has a 2 amp fuse in it that's only designed to run at 120 volt, when you go to 240 volt, 2 amps might be too high of a rating of fuse because of the lower current draw. You may have to drop that down to a 1 amp or other value fuse. The best thing to do in those cases is try to find the manual for the device in question and see what fuse they recommend for the voltage or the, the input voltage for the region you're trying to switch your device to. In my Lexicon LXP15 effects processor video that I did a teardown in, there is an example of that. The transformer is the same way. It has multiple taps on the circuit board to allow the input voltage to change for different regions. But there's actually two separate fuse holders on the actual main board inside the unit. One was populated and one wasn't. And they were labeled 120 volt, 240 volt. So in the case of that device, if you actually change the voltage depending on the region it was in, it did require a different rating fuse to be placed inside it. So this was just a quick demonstration of how to change the voltage on your Roland synthesizer, so hopefully you find it useful. I'm going to have a couple follow-up videos to this as well because I actually have a synthesizer I'm going to need to modify to the correct input voltage, so I will be posting that soon. Thanks for watching.